Followers of this channel will already know of my enthusiasm for 1950s viewfinder cameras, specifically the much underrated Vito series of 35mm cameras from Voigtlander, which includes the Vito P and the Vito 2A. This much underrated class of camera was very much the point and shoot of its day, offering a compact and convenient way to document life without the additional weight and form of interchangeable lenses and rangefinder mechanisms. These practical little cameras really started life in 1925 with the invention of Oscar Barnack's first Leica. By the 1950s the consumer camera sector had grown exponentially and every camera company under the sun was muscling in with a 35mm viewfinder camera of their own to try and get their share of that particular pie. Obviously at the top of the pile was Leica, followed by some solid well-made cameras from the likes of Voigtlander, Zeiss and Adox. In the next tier down there were some decent designs from Kodak and Agfa. Then, at the bottom of the pile, there were the more inexpensive efforts from companies like Ilford and Bayer. This particular camera is a Bayer Beret version 2 from 1963. These were knocked out in huge numbers and were particularly common in the UK as they were sold by the popular chemist chain Boots. On the face of it, the Beret bears a striking resemblance to the Voigtlander's Vito B. It's only when you get one in hand you realise that there's some fairly major differences. First off, the build quality. Whilst the Vito B is a solid lump of brass, the Beret is lighter and tinnier, feeling like it's been stamped rather than milled. This feeling of cheap and cheerful extends all the way around the Beret, and in places makes the camera feel more like a toy than a tool. It has just three speeds consisting of 1 30th, 1 60th and 1 125th that are changed by a standard dial around the lens, but the dial has no click stops and hardly any resistance so it's way too easy to knock and change your speed by accident. The little viewfinder is so small it's next to useless, and even the accompanying case ditches the beautiful leather you'd associate with German cameras of this era, in favour of this tacky plastic example. It also features one of those Ludwig Meritar lenses, a 45mm f2.9, very similar to the 50mm f2.9 Meritar I reviewed on that Yagi Exa a while back. If you remember, I hated that lens, and no surprise, I hate this one too. It's mushy all over the frame, with very little sharpness, and some pretty weird distortion, particularly around the edges of the frame. It's a million miles away from the excellent sharp optics of the Vito B. It's quickly becoming obvious that we're comparing apples with oranges here, and yes, it's easy to knock the Beret for its shortcomings, but it's those shortcomings that enabled the Beret to be sold at a much lower price, opening up the world of 35mm photography to a broader selection of society, and creating a myriad of memories along the way. So why review this little piece of crap? Well, here's the thing. It actually belonged to my grandfather. I never knew the man, he was long dead before I showed up. According to my mother, he was no photographer, but bought the camera in the early 1960s to take some snaps of the family. Looking at the condition of the camera, I think it's fair to surmise he didn't really use it at all. It's mint, cosmetically and optically. What was even more interesting was when my mum produced this from her secret stash of heirlooms, it was immediately obvious that there was still a film in it. It was an old boots film in a metal canister of roughly the same era of the bearer itself. The film had laid dormant inside that little camera for 50 or 60 years. Whilst it was almost certainly going to be buggered, it made sense to send it off to the pros and have it developed. How exciting. Whatever was on that roll was a mystery, and it was of much interest to my mum as it was to me. Harmon Labs developed the roll and sent it back. Sadly, it was pretty far gone. There were a few images where you could make out a young girl that we think is my sister, probably during one of her holidays to see her grandparents. So, would I recommend this camera? Hell no. It's bad. Really bad. Did I enjoy shooting it? No, not particularly. But it was interesting, delving into my own family's photographic history and working with a tool that was last used by my grandfather. A man I never knew, but that I feel I have now connected with on some level, thanks to this rubbish little camera.